we will be explaining organic reactivity in terms of mechanisms or mechanistic pathways which describe the overall chemical transformation as a sequence of elementary steps or steps that can't be broken down into any finer division. These steps are like building blocks and we'll string them together in various ways. For substitution at an sp3 center there are two mechanistic pathways by which chemical transformations take place. And the first of these is a one-step process, and it forms our first elementary step. It's known as the SN2 process, or the bimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction. The SN2 process involves sigma bond making and sigma bond breaking, and these two things happen simultaneously. The curved arrows show what's going on in terms of the changes in electron configuration. The nucleophile donates its pair of electrons to the carbon that's at the sp3 center, and that pair of electrons is used to create the new carbon nucleophile bond. In order to avoid having more than an octet of electrons at this carbon atom as the new carbon and nucleophile bond is being made, the carbon to leaving group bond must simultaneously be broken. And so the SN2 process can be described as simultaneous association of a nucleophile with simultaneous dissociation of a leaving group, or called a nucleophuge. The SN2 process cannot be broken down into any finer terms since the process of association and dissociation take place simultaneously. Since the SN2 step can't be broken down into any finer terms, this mechanistic pathway for substitution is also one of our elementary steps that we'll use in other mechanistic processes. We can describe the molecular orbitals associated with the SN2 elementary step as an N to sigma star sigma type interaction, which we can see from these curved arrows. The non-bonding lone pair of electrons on the nucleophile engage in the empty sigma star orbital associated with the carbon to leaving group bond. The sigma star orbital is largely associated with carbon, especially if the leaving group is an electronegative atom. Also, that large lobe of that sigma star is positioned behind the carbon to leaving group bond zone. And so in this backside region is where the nucleophile will approach, and it will do so in a coaxial way so that it's a sigma type best kind of overlap interaction. There's a second mechanistic pathway by which substitution at sp3 centers take place, and it involves a two-step process in which association and dissociation are separate events. The reaction pathway is known as the SN1 pathway, or nucleophilic substitution by a unimolecular process, and it first involves the dissociation of the leaving group to make a pair of ions, a cation centered on carbon, and an anion centered on the leaving group. The carbocation is then captured by the nucleophilic anion to make a new carbon to nucleophile bond, and so overall we've done a substitution reaction for the leaving group with a nucleophile. Let's examine the dissociation and association step in more detail. And so the elementary step known as the nucleophile dissociation, or D sub n step, only involves sigma bond breaking and can be written by the single curved arrow shown here in which the bonding pair of electrons ends up on the leaving group L to make this anion. In terms of molecular orbital interactions, we would describe this as a filled sigma interacting with an empty A on the leaving group, so it's a sigma to A, and since there is no bonding interaction, we describe it as a sigma to A no bond interaction. Pay close attention to the direction of electron flow. That pair of electrons goes from the sigma bond to the leaving group. The leaving group is often going to be an electronegative atom, and the reason for that is it's going to need low-lying empty orbitals, and electronegative atoms have such low-lying orbitals to accept that pair of electrons and stabilize that negative charge. The elementary step known as A sub n, or association of a nucleophile, involves sigma bond making, and the curved arrows show that the source of the electrons, the filled orbital, is a non-bonding pair of electrons centered on the nucleophile that reacts with an empty atom-centered orbital on the carbocation, and that pair of electrons is involved in making the new nucleophile 
to carbon bond. And so in terms of molecular orbitals, the filled non-bonding pair of electrons finds the empty atom-centered orbital on the carbocation, and we have an N to A sigma type interaction. Having now looked at all the elementary steps involved in substitution, the next webcast will compare these two mechanistic pathways in more detail.